Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about WordPress for photographers. Now this is going to be the part one and all I'm going to do is explain why I think you should use WordPress for your photography website. Now the one you're seeing in front of you now, this slider that's changing, this is in fact a my WordPress site. Now you are seeing that bar up there because uh, I'm logged into my WordPress as well. And I'll go over that in a minute. So why should you use WordPress? Well, WordPress gives you far more control than let's say Wix or Squarespace. It is open source. Things can go wrong. Plugins might not work with other plugins. But all that aside, if you enjoy tinkering a little bit, this is the best route to go down. Now, if you're not happy with the technical side of WordPress, then go with Wix or Squarespace or SmugMug or whoever. But if you want that control and you like tinkering and you like a challenge, WordPress is for you. So WordPress is a content management system, a CMS. You might hear that mentioned in other platforms as well. And all it means, it has an interface that anyone could really easily use to create content. If I hand coded a website and handed it off to a local plumber, and said to him, you'll have to update it yourself, he would probably come around with his spanner and attack me. So what I'm saying is, it's a CMS, it means it's easy to update and create content. And obviously there's levels of authority you can give to people as well. So as a web designer, I could create a site for someone, give them a couple of hours training at most, and say, right, that's how you do it, that's how you add pages in, that's how you edit pages, and off you go. So it, it is something you can hand off to people. But as I said, there's a bit of a learning curve. Now, WordPress is open source, and we're talking about WordPress.org. There is WordPress.com, but WordPress.com is a business site. It's for bloggers, and it's really nothing to do with WordPress.org, although probably they're using the same platform, which is WordPress. It's very hard to go down the .com route, because if you go to a hosting provider, let's say like GoDaddy, and ask for hosting for WordPress, they're not going to give you WordPress.com, only org. What I'm saying is don't worry about the .com. Whatever you do, if you're going to host it yourself and have your own domain name, it's going to be WordPress.org. Because WordPress.com is much more stricter about what they allow, things like plugins and stuff like that. And that brings me to what WordPress is really all about. It's about themes and plugins. A theme dictates how the site is going to look. A plugin extends the functionality of that site. So we've got the plugins and we've got the themes. Underneath that, we have pages and posts. A page is a static page, but WordPress just called them a page. And a post is a blog post. Yes, WordPress is a blogging platform, but you don't have to blog because all you have to do is create pages, which are static pages, like this page you can see on my screen now. Don't worry about this blogging aspect. Yes, it is a blogging platform. I blog, but I have five or six static pages, which really show off my photographs, etc., and sliders and things like this. They're on static pages, which are just called pages. My posts, let's go to my blog here. Pick a blog or pick a post, I should say. Notice it has a category. By default, that's on there. You can get rid of that with some CSS, but honestly, why would you want to get rid of it? It has a date. That's really important because behind WordPress, there's something called an SQL database. It's really powerful, and this is what drives the post. So they have date and timestamps, etc., and they have categories. At the bottom, I've allowed commenting. I can turn this on and off, and that's uh, an about me bit, but basically you can post a comment. Back to the top. So we've got our categories. Underneath that, underneath categories that is, we have things called tags. And there's a tag cloud there, and basically the categories at the top of the tree, I've probably got six categories I have, books, equipment, Lightroom, photography, Photoshop, and web design. And per page per post, I should say, I might add in these tags. Now you can flip them around if you want to and convert them, but basically the way it works is 
categories at the top, and then you've got tags on individual pages. So the tag could be shared between three or four pages, but normally you add the tag in at post level. So my, my, my pages are things like Isle of Wight photos here. These are uh, static pages, and I'm using a plugin here called a central grid. Now, I'm not going to go into plugins in any depth, especially for photographers. Uh, that's going to be another video. I'm just showing you how the site works. So this is a static page. I've showed you the posts. So you don't have to blog if you don't want to. Now, it's not WYSIWYG um, because if I went to edit page now, I'll find a better page, actually. I think I'll go to one of my blog posts here. If you go to edit this post, and I'm seeing that bar there because I'm logged in, the, the, the closest it gets to WYSIWYG with what you see is what you get is that. So it's a bit uh, just blocky. And this is the latest update. I think it's called Gutenberg 5.1. And I think Gutenberg was the first guy that invented the printing machine anyway. So you can move these blocks around. That's as close as it gets to being like Wix or Squarespace. But once you move stuff around, you can just preview it, not publish it, and just preview it or keep it as a draft. So I'm seeing the preview there. So I know it's working. Then I just go edit post and go back and edit the post because it is a post. Obviously, it's a blog post. So that's as far as it gets to being like Wix or Squarespace. Also, you can host your WordPress site where you like. So if I went, let's say, domain name, I did a Google search. What I would do first is if I didn't have a domain name, I would search anywhere for the domain name. Pick GoDaddy. This is an advert. It doesn't matter. I type something like dog's leg um, dot com. Why not? And search. You don't have to put the dot com there. It will do it for you with this search. So it says, well, actually, you can have it for 99p. Now, that's to pull you in. And if you get the hosting with them and they renew your domain name, they'll probably charge you about £14. So you could search around, add that to your cart and pay for that and then host it somewhere else. But I don't recommend that. The way I recommend doing it is like this. Let's um, go to SiteGround where I um, host my site and I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying it's where I host my site. Manage WordPress hosting. The word managed is quite important. It's very difficult to get unmanaged WordPress hosting. What it means is they put WordPress platform onto the site for you. A theme will be picked and a few plugins are thrown in. And basically the environment you're in on the server is geared towards WordPress. And if WordPress needs updating, they do it for you. Um, it's a bit of a scam in some ways. You could do it yourself, but Honestly, finding unmanaged WordPress hosting is quite difficult. So don't worry about it. If you know nothing, just go with the managed WordPress hosting. Now, start up here, $2.95 a month for the first year. I can have a website using free themes and free plugins, which there are plenty. I can have a very good website for £2.95 a month. After one year, it will go up to $8.95 a month. I recommend that you renegotiate if you want to tart around, as we say in the UK, and move it to another hosting platform, you can. It's a little bit technical, but, you know, most people could do it and basically transfer their site somewhere else and then get the first year offer and then at the end of the first year, move it around. But honestly, I would just phone up close to the time of the renewal and ask for a discount. Now, if I go get plan now, and I, I know my domain name's available, I want to register a new domain. They're going to charge me £14.95. It's a lot steeper than, we, as we saw with GoDaddy, but they don't even know what the name is yet, but that's just the way it is. So I could type in dog's leg in there and change it to dot .com, let's say. Go to proceed. Put in my details and begin the temporary password and you can actually get to your WordPress site via the hosting site. But the normal way to get to a WordPress site, I'm going to log out now and show you. Now I will log or get my own site back up and I will see it as anyone else sees it. The way into a WordPress site is like this. Any WordPress site. Off the end of the URL there, type WP. Dash admin, 
press return. I'm just going to log in. And that's what you'll see when you first come in. Now, when you first come in, what will happen is in a managed WordPress scenario, they would have put a theme on for you and it will be one of these three themes. Now, I've got a paid for theme and I'm not going to cover paid for themes in this video. I'm just going to tell you that you will have a free theme, probably 2019 and a few others, but one will be activated. That means you've got a theme straight away. Now, what you would do then is go and create some pages or um, posts and then set one of the pages as your home page. And that's quite simple to do, but I'm not going to cover it in this video. So you're away basically and you just publish your site. So if I went to, uh, let's say, pages or pages now, I I'm not going to go new. What I'm going to do is show you how easy things are. Now, if I go to edit, I've got a little gallery there. I'm actually going to delete it remove it and now I'm going to add something in and basically I'm going to add a gallery like so pick it from my media library I could upload it from my computer but I've got pictures already just click through on the ones I want that'll do a couple more create a new gallery insert gallery I could save this as a draft but go to preview it doesn't matter if it's a draft or not and there you are you've got a gallery add some text and you're away. So that's why I like WordPress. It's very simple to use. Now, it will get frustrating. I'm not going to cover the plugins too much. I will come to plugins in a minute, but that's what will happen. You'll have a three theme. When you get some content together, then you would go and buy a theme. Honestly, the free themes are fantastic, but if you're really serious, you'll buy a theme because you have far more control. Then you would buy a theme let's say a photography based theme, which I have a few extras thrown in like password protected galleries and all these other type of things, portfolios built in, or you could buy a multi-purpose theme. But honestly, if you don't want to buy a theme, the free themes are pretty good. Now I'll show you what I mean by that is if I go to the dashboard and go to appearance, some of this stuff here is actually theme specific or plugin specific. Some things will always be there like posts, etc., media, where you keep all your photos and zip files and etc. But under appearance, which will always be there under themes. If I want to add new and when I do this, I'm in the WordPress.org environment and all these themes are free. So if I go feature filter and go, let's say photography and go apply filters. I have got a hell of a lot of photography based themes to play with. Now, these have been written by people sometimes just for altruistic reasons, or maybe they're lighter versions, you know, lighter versions of a paid for theme, but they are still very good. And if you want to get a website out there cheaply, you can. If you want to preview them, you just look here, preview, see if you like it. And it will just be a basic preview because we haven't got any content yet on this theme. So it just looked like that and you can see what's going on roughly. And then you could install it and activate it, etc. So installing is not activating. You can install as many themes as you like. You can only have one active theme. I'm just going to click like that. So these are all free. If I had got a theme paid for theme and I'll come to that in my next video, I'd upload it here. Let's show you plugins. Uh, many free plugins and lots of my plugins are free. Some are paid for, some are free, but to extend their functionality, you have to pay for them. Most of mine are free. One or two are paid for and they extend the functionality of WordPress. They're written by individuals, normally plugins, I would say not by teams. And sometimes plugins will clash with each other and it can be frustrating and sometimes things don't work. But if you paid for a theme, you'll get support. And don't forget, people like GoDaddy and SiteGround, they're just hosting your site. They don't care about you having problems with your plugins. But if you buy a plugin, you get support usually for six months. And I'll show you all about buying plugins later. But again, if I wanted to add a new plugin, I could. And there's so many free ones. And I will recommend some free ones in my next video. And I will go into the ones you should pay for, especially if you're a photographer. So if I search plugins and put image optimizer in there, I've got my optimizer. See, sometimes it's not like Google. You have to put a Z in to see everything. So if I went like that, what I'm saying is um, American English is probably better. 
that's a very good plugin. Um, it's free, like the short pixel one, but you can only actually do it for a, a hundred images, let's say. Then you have to pay as you go or whatever, or pay a, a subscription. What I will tell you now is, and I think this is important, when you bring a photograph or image into WordPress, it automatically creates four other images. And the theme might cre create even more images and plugins, even more images yet again. So for every one image I bring in, WordPress will create another 11 images, but at least four. So when it says 100 images, you can see why it will only do a few actual images because it has to do for each one, for me, the other 11 as well. So it's something to be aware of. And the reason they do that, obviously, because different devices will be looking at your website, phones, tablets, etc. The aspect ratio will be the same, but they're trying to serve up images at different sizes. I think I've gone far enough on this. I don't want to get too far into this because it's just an overview. So it is very easy to get going. So when I do my next video, I will be much more specific about the plugins and the themes, but I want to take you down my route if you want a more professional site. And I learned a lot of lessons with WordPress. I always thought WordPress was just for blogging, which, well, it still is, but you don't have to use it for that. That's why I left it alone. I was a web designer and all I did was hand code, then I used frameworks, and then I left it alone for many years. I came back in. I couldn't be bothered to relearn everything, so I jumped into WordPress, and I love it now. I think it's got great control. I have had my frustrations. I have, and I've had a few security issues as well. But WordPress is as safe as anything else, really, now. They had some problems a few years ago. So what I'm saying is, if you're a photographer, WordPress gives you far more control than Wix or Squarespace. You can host where you like. You can use free stuff as well. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.